Greetings Earthlings, Megan here, and this is part two of my essential tips and tricks in caring for sensitive skin. I'm a beauty product developer, so I've developed many skincare products over the course of my career behind the scenes in the beauty industry. And then additionally, I have sensitive skin myself, so I have some personal experience on this matter. In part one, we discussed being gentle with your skin, um, looking for products that are made specifically for sensitive skin, avoiding or being cautious of fragrance or fragrant products, um, and then finally looking for the ideal moisturizer for your skin type, whether you have dry or oily skin. You want to make sure that you are moisturizing or hydrating your skin to supplement your skin barrier in some way. This will just help your skin function optimally and be healthy. So now we can talk about the remainder of my tips and tricks, starting with number five, which is to wear a mineral sunscreen. The sun is very aggressive. I know there's a lot of folks out there that love the sun. It It's amazing. We wouldn't be able to live without the sun, quite literally. Um, but it also is a huge source of energy that um, can be very, very damaging to the skin. And this can manifest in, um, you know, temporary sunburns, or it can manifest in really aggressive skin cancer. So in general, it's just good skincare practice, but especially for sensitive skin, all skin types benefit from this, but especially sensitive skin in wearing a sunscreen. And the way, and the reason I specify mineral sunscreen specifically is because chemical sunscreens can be irritating to sensitive skin. Um, so when you're looking for a mineral sunscreen, if you flip the back of the package over and you want to confirm it's mineral, usually it'll say mineral on front of back on the front of the package. Um, but you can also flip around to the back of the package or the back of the um, carton that it's in and it'll say titanium dioxide or zinc oxide right at the top. And these are the two ingredients or combination of ingredients that can be used in a mineral sunscreen to help protect your skin from the harmful UV rays that are emitted from the sun. Chemical sunscreens utilize ingredients like avobenzone, octocrylene, octanoxate. These are kind of the ingredients that you would look for or see in a chemical sunscreen. There's a whole slew of ingredients that can be in chemical sunscreens. There's more than the three that I mentioned, but when you're trying to look for a mineral sunscreen, the there's only two and it's titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Tip number six is to use treatments, but use them sparingly. And the reason why is a lot of really potent ingredients over time can be sensitizing. Um, a really great example would be like chemical exfoliants like glycolic acid and lactic acid. The latest trend in you know the skincare community is to look for ingredients that have the highest percentage claim. Um, which isn't always the best thing for sensitive skin. Um, so you want to make sure that if you're using like these chemical exfoliants like glycolic acid, like lactic acid, um, you want to use them sparingly and you want to make sure that you're introducing them into your skincare routine and following the instructions and then looking for signs of irritation because maybe you need to actually use less than what is directed or use it less often than directed. Or maybe that particular product, maybe you find out that, you know, a 30% AHA treatment serum is just too much for you. Um, I kind of have like a less is more philosophy when it comes to caring for sensitive skin. So you just wanna be really aware of what you're putting on your skin and you want to use things that are potent very sparingly and be cautious of them. Another tip would be to avoid physical exfoliation and avoid harsh scrubs. I just don't think that these are particularly helpful for sensitive skin. Um, I think if it's like a really fine, really gentle scrub that's made for sensitive skin, that would be okay. But you wanna avoid things that are like really super aggressive and coarse because it's just like, 
There's better ways of exfoliating the skin using, you know, mild acids like um, a lower strength lactic acid versus just using a really aggressive coarse scrub. Tip number seven is to spot test products when you're introducing it into your skincare routine. This is just a really good rule of thumb for a lot of skin types, but especially folks who are struggling with, you know, maybe something like uh, breakouts or sensitive skin. You would just want to, you know, spot test this new product that you're trying to use, maybe on your forehead, maybe on your cheek, over the course of a week or two, just to see how your skin responds to it before you apply it all over your face. I definitely recommend this for exfoliating products like we just discussed. And when you're incorporating new products into your skincare routine, you wanna look for signs of irritation. So in the previous video, we discussed that. That could be redness, flushing, stinging, itching, burning, rashes. Um, you just wanna look for these signs and that could be an indicator that you need to use this particular product in a smaller amount or less frequently, or maybe eliminate it from your routine altogether. Um, if you have sensitive skin, you wanna examine your skin because your skin will tell you if something is wrong. Tip number eight, again, falls in line with our common sense strategy for caring for sensitive skin, and that's to eat well. You wanna make sure that you're getting enough fresh fruits and vegetables in your diet. Fresh fruits and vegetables are rich in healthy nutrients, including antioxidants. And those are not only good for your skin, they're just good for your health in general. Another good thing to incorporate into your diet would be um, healthy fats, like fats from almonds and walnuts and fish. These are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which are um, known to be anti-inflammatory, which is like a word I really try not to throw around a lot as a product developer. <laughs> like I almost try to never use that word in reference to skincare because it sounds so medical in nature, but we do know for a fact that healthy fats are very, very good for you. And then lastly, to stay hydrated, make sure you're drinking enough water, or fluids that are not high in sugar. Just these kind of three essential things, eating your fruits and vegetables, eating healthy fats, and then staying hydrated are not only good for your health, but they will also be reflected in your skin. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. And then please, please, please let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. I try to make this information easy to understand, but I've also been in the industry so long that sometimes I don't even know what's understandable anymore. So if you are confused, it is not your fault, it is my fault. So please let me know in the comments. And then lastly, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can see more super nerdy videos from yours truly about all things beauty. Thanks guys.